What's up everyone, welcome back to Reef RX. Today I'm going to give you a detailed overview of the equipment on my Waterbox 110.4 along with reviewing some of the products and sharing my experience with their customer service team if I've had one. One thing to note, this is not a sponsored video, these are just reviews of the products that I've purchased on my own for my tank. Let's get started. So here is my Waterbox Marine X 110.4. It's an absolutely gorgeous tank with stunning half inch thick sapphire ultra clear glass and a sturdy PVC coated stand. This tank was perfect for my needs. I wanted a reef tank that was manufactured by a reputable company. It's the perfect size for living spaces located in and I have the perfect view from the couch. Doesn't get much better than that. I purchased this from Ocean State Aquatics in Rhode Island. The tank was in stock so I was able to bring it home the same day. The best part about it was the the stand came assembled and as far as plumbing goes all the PVC was pre-cut so you didn't need to make any cuts and there was no glue needed to assemble the plumbing. It couldn't have been much easier than that. I do run Neptune Apex system on this tank. I look at the Neptune system as an insurance for my tank. If something goes wrong I'll know about it before it's too late. Customer service has been good. I've interacted with them several times for various issues. Nothing major. Everything is done over email. It's a bit frustrating that there's not a number you can just call and talk to someone but I, it seems like most companies are going this way as far as customer service or tech support is concerned. So for the lighting on my tank, I'm using two Hydra AI 26 HD lights. On the lights, I have 3D printed diffusers that I purchased online to help minimize the disco ball effects the LED lights can produce. I like these lights as they provide a good spectrum of lighting to my tank. The coral growth seems good, but I'd be curious to try and add some T5 lights to the system to turn this into a hybrid lighting system. If I do make this change, I'll be sure to make a video um, to share the experience with you guys. I've reached out to support twice for the Hydras and both times uh, I had a great experience. Uh, the first time I added an additional light to my older tank a while ago and the spectrums between the two lights didn't match. So what the support did was they sent me out an additional 26 HD light and had me compare all three lights and send back the one that did not match. And then the second time I reached out to support was very recently because the mount here I was trying to adjust the mount and then that screw that holds that foot on was rusted and stripped. I tried finding replacement screws online but I had no success so I decided to email the support to see if they could tell me where I could purchase a new one. Um, they emailed me back the following business day and I was asked for my address and proof of purchase. I sent them a copy of my receipt but was unsure why they asked since I purchased this a few years back and I was expecting to pay for the new screw. The next day I received another email stating they're sending me two replacement screws along with the handle, all free of charge. So I was not expecting any of this, and I would definitely give their customer service five stars from both of my experiences. So the next piece I have up top here is the Neptune Auto Fish Feeder, which I use to feed the fish in the morning and the afternoon. At nighttime, I feed frozen cubes, but if I am away and not gonna make it home, I can remotely feed the fish using the Neptune Apex app. For my power heads, I am using two Vortec MP40 pumps. They're very powerful pumps for this tank, I find, and I run them at about 40%. I had the MP10s in my old tank, but I could not get these to work with this half-inch thick glass. So I upgraded to the MP40s. The MP40s are easily controllable with the Mobius app um, and lets you do a demonstration of all the different modes to get the perfect flow that you're looking for for your reef tank. I also like that you can purchase a battery backup for these DC pumps and run the pumps for about 24 hours during a power outage. I've had some interactions with the customer service team for the Vortec pumps, which is the same customer service team as the uh, Hydra AI lights, and they've been very helpful. I was having trouble connecting uh, one of my older pumps, which was the MP10s for my old tank, to the Mobius app. They sent me out some replacement parts uh, pretty fast, but ultimately did not fix the issue, and I eventually gave up. I haven't had this issue with the MP40s and I still do use an MP10 on my other tank and I don't have any issues with that. So here's an overview of my sump. In the back here there are two overflow drains. Uh, the main drain has a gate valve on it so you can adjust the flow to minimize noise and then there's an emergency overflow drain to the left of it. In the first chamber that the overflow drains go into I have two heaters. I use a 300 watt titanium heater and I also have a backup 150 watt glass heater. The titanium heater I control using a Wi-Fi Inkbird 
heater controller, uh, which is also connected to one of my outlets on my Neptune Apex system for uh, redundancy in case the ink bird fails. The second heater has an internal thermometer uh, in which it's much less reliable, but it's also connected to my Neptune Apex system for redundancy. So if that were to fail, uh, the Apex would be its secondary backup. From there, the water flows into the filter sock chamber. I use two clear DI4 filter fleece rollers instead of filter socks. I decided to go with the rollers because I knew I would not be good at changing out filter socks every few days. Plus, sometimes my wife and I travel and I want to make sure that the tank can run on autopilot for at least a week or so and I didn't want to risk any big nutrient swings. So the way this works is the filter fleece gets clogged, the water level rises, and once the water level rises enough to hit the optical sensor, it triggers the motor to run until the water level has dropped back below that sensor. I definitely had my fair share of issues with these rollers at first, and it took several months to actually get them working. First, let's talk about the little controller it's connected to. I'm not sure why, but both controls from both units were defective. I reached out to support, they sent me two more controllers, and those didn't work either. So they sent me two more, and one of those worked, so they sent me one more, and finally that last one worked. The controller would turn on and then quickly turn right back off. The other issue I had was the water level would not rise enough to trigger the optical sensor to start the motor. The water would seem to escape around the sides of the fleece towards the top down here. So it never allowed the water level to actually rise. Make sure you are using the correct adapters when you're installing these. They come with two or three different adapters to fit your filter sock diameter design. This was part of my problem, but the water would still not rise high enough to trip the sensor. I had to install a baffle to raise the water level in that chamber. I could have increased the water volume in my sump, but the water level would have been higher than I wanted it to be, which is why I wanted this baffle. I also wanted to add a separate refugium chamber so this baffle would actually accomplish two projects I wanted done. The baffle definitely did the trick. These work perfectly now and I couldn't be happier. One thing I really like about the controller is that if the motor is running for a period of time, probably about 15 seconds or so, the controller will sound an audible alarm and stop the motor. So if the optical sensor were to fail, or your ATO dumped five gallons of RO water into your tank over the course of 10 minutes, like mine did last week, this won't go through the entire roll of fleece. I didn't know that was a feature until it actually happened. So like I said, now that I finally got these rollers working and I got them to operate on their own, I absolutely love them. I change the fleece probably every six to eight weeks um, and the nutrients in my tank stays pretty low. If you want to see a video of the process of how to change out the fleece rolls, check out my other videos because I posted one on how to do that a few weeks ago. If you guys are enjoying this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. After the water flows through the filter rolls, it moves on to my skimmer chamber. For the skimmer, I'm using a Coral Box D500 Plus. This is a great skimmer that's ozone ready, which I do run on this tank. I have the skimmer elevated on the large Marine Pure block at the bottom. There's a large collection cup which has a drain hose attached, which you can easily empty the skimmer collection right through this hose. The controller on this skimmer is really nice also. You can adjust the motor speed along with buttons for feed modes and there's even an audible alarm if the skimmer collection cup is full as long as you have the float switch installed. If the alarm is triggered, the skimmer motor will turn off, preventing an overflow of nutrients into your tank which could have devastating effects. The skimmer also has an adjustable water flow here in the back so you can tune the skimmer to your needs. On my skimmer air intake, I have a line that goes directly outside to pull in fresh air and another line that comes from my ozone generator. On the ozone generator, I also have the air filter through carbon dioxide media, then through an air dryer. I use the carbon dioxide media uh, and fresh air from the outside to help maintain a more stable pH, which does an excellent job at doing. I did reach out to support for the skimmer and had a good experience. When I purchased the skimmer and I set it up, I noticed the seal around the drain for the skimmer cup collection was not watertight and would drain everything the cup collected right back into the tank. I reached out to the manufacturer and they sent me a new skimmer cup about a week later. I also emailed them another time to ask them if the skimmer was ozone compatible and I quickly got a response just hours later with an answer. Behind the skimmer I have a small power head where my dosing lines come in and I have some marine pure 2x2 cubes below that to increase surface area so I can maintain a good population of beneficial bacteria. From here the water flows into my refugium chamber which I made out of a few pieces of acrylic. If you're interested in seeing how this was done, check out my other videos as I posted this project. It was pretty easy and did not take
take long. I do have more 2x2 two two marine pure cubes in the entire bottom surface of my fuge to host pods. I also place a small divider here to separate my sea lettuce and my kato. My tang and my fox face love to eat the sea lettuce. For lighting in my fuge, I'm using two waterproof Tunes LED lights. These lights put off a great amount of power and grow out my macro algae like crazy. From the fuge, the water comes through the small chamber here, which I use to put any bag media that I need to use. Then into the return pump chamber. I use the Neptune Core 20 for my return pump. I love that it connects to my Apex controller and I can view and control this remotely. For my auto top off, I use the Tunes Osmolator 3155. The reason I chose this ATO is due to the dual sensors uh, with one being optical and the other one being a float sensor. I am big for redundancy so this was an easy choice for me. No matter how much redundancy you have in a reef tank, failures can still happen. The other night I woke up to several audible alarms coming from my tank. The optical sensor failed likely due to a lack of cleaning and five gallons of RODI water was dumped into my tank. I can't remember if you have to adjust a switch or a jumper for this to happen, but after 10 minutes, the ATO shuts off and sends out an audible alarm. Luckily, there were no devastating effects on the tank. I've interacted with the customer service team once for my ATO on my other tank. The optical sensor would not trigger the motor to start. I sent the unit in for repair, actually spoke with a tech on the phone who called me with questions when he was testing my unit. He replaced the optical sensor based off of my complaints even though he could not find an issue. It has failed a few times since. It was not as frequent as it was before, so I believe the failure since or due to the optical sensor not being routinely cleaned. If I've learned anything, it's make sure to clean your equipment. For my ATO container, I have an external Triton 10 gallon ATO reservoir. The ATO reservoir in the sump was just way too small. I did use that for a refugium chamber at one point with a pump, but it was only until I built my new chamber. I seem to evaporate about a gallon a day from this tank. On the other side of my tank, I have a carbon dioxide reactor that I was talking about earlier, and I have my ozone dryer reactor using silica beads. The silica beads are great because you can re-energize them in your oven. When the beads are exhausted, they turn pink, and when they're unused or charged, they turn blue. As you can see, the majority of these beads are exhausted, and it is time for me to recharge them. If you're interested in how to heat these in the oven, let me know in the comments, and I'll make sure to make a video on how to do that. For my ozone generator, I'm using the Poseidon 200, which does an excellent job at keeping my water crystal clear. All my electrical on this side of the tank is a mess. I plan to do something in the future, possibly get a cabinet to put on the side of the tank and hook up all my equipment over there to free up the space. I keep my Neptune dosers in here as well. I have two dosers. And I also have a Trident that tests my calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium throughout the day. And my dosers were dosed based off of the readings using the Trident controlled dosing task in the app. I can easily see what I'm dosing daily and adjust if needed. I do have a Neptune FMM module in the back and that allows me to program uh, various sensors. I have a leak sensor on the floor along with a sump high sensor, a sump low sensor, an ATO reservoir low sensor so I know when that needs to be filled. I also have a breakout box which I haven't connected to this tank yet since my upgrade. I'll be setting it back up in a few days so I can program the Apex to turn on my cabinet lights uh, when the doors are opened automatically without me having to hit a switch. I'll be sure to make a video on how to do this with some instructions um, so if it's something that you'd be interested in you can do as well. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. And Thanks so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found this helpful and useful. If you have any questions please be sure to leave them in the comments and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe.